God from whom all blessings flow. Yeah. Praise him, all creatures of the Lord. Praise him above you, heavenly Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Good yes. morning, pleasant parishioners of Peachy. It's so wonderful to be with you this morning. I just thank and praise God for this opportunity uh, to share in this worship experience. I was listening to a song uh, recently about not turning back. And part of the song says, I've been changed, mm -hmm. healed, freed, delivered. I've found joy, peace, grace, and favor. With so many of those things working to our advantage, what reason do we have to turn back? Amen. Even in the scripture, in Mark, in the book of Mark, it talks about if you're in the field, don't worry about going back and getting clothes. You should close because there's work to do. And we're also encouraged by scripture to press forward toward the mark of a high calling, right. which is in Christ Jesus. Look not back on those things that are behind us, uh -huh. uh, but press on and, and move Amen. forward. And with such a great uh, God in front of us, with all that he has done uh, to provide for us, what reason do we have to return? So I want to encourage Amen. you that in spite of the difficulties that you may encounter each day, in spite of the tragedies that our, com our country uh, has faced over the last several months, in spite of uh, opportunities or, or that may fail you or uh, uh, when despair may comes your way, remember to press on toward the mark. Uh, because Christ is beside you, uh, he's uh, in front of you, and he's certainly behind us, and he's able to help us yes. to achieve yes, yes, everything that yes, we set out yes, to do. So we just want to thank yes, and praise God for the position that he has put us in. Yes. We want to thank him for caring enough about us yes. that, he's, uh -huh. that, that he came yes. uh, to die on Calvary's cross. We want to thank, thank God uh, for loving yes. us so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. Don't turn back. Uh -huh. Keep looking forward. I'd like to offer just a brief Man. word of prayer. Eternal Father, we are grateful that we have such a precious gift. Yes. Uh, Father, the gift of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the shedding of his blood, Lord, because we know with the shedding of blood, uh, because of the shedding of blood, uh, we can be forgiven of our sins. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission yes. of sin. Father, yes. you said in your word that obedience is better than sacrifice. So it's our, yes. our charge, oh God, and our hope, our desire, and every effort that we have is to be obedient to your word. Yes. But Father, we yes. know in those times we might fall, fall short. Yes, Lord. We can come to you, oh God, seek forgiveness and seek yes. deliverance, knowing that you have promised to separate our sins as far as east yes. is yes. from the west. Lord, we yes. are grateful for this day. Lord, we're grateful for this place, for yes. this place called Pleasant Green, where we can come together. Yes worship you in spirit and in truth. Yes, yes Lord. Father, we thank you for the gifts that you've given to all of us, oh God. Father, you said that our gifts will find a place. Yes. Father, so whether it's a, yes, a musician or a singer or a teacher, a father or an encourager or a supporter, father, a, a minister, father, one who brings healing uh, from a health unit, father, those who greet us, Lord, there's a place and an opportunity for all yes. to serve. Yes. And father, yes. we thank you for being the true vine. Yes, and Lord, we thank you for giving us an opportunity just to come to you in prayer at this moment. Lord, our prayer is that you would bless this morning's service, oh God, that you would bless the songs, Lord, that as they go forth, they may prepare the hearts to receive the word, Lord, because the word is so important, particularly in a day like today. Lord, you said, uh, how can they hear without the preaching? Father, we're thankful for our pastor and yes. for the word yes. that he brings to us on a regular basis, Lord. His efforts to ensure that we're uh, well grounded in the word of God. Yes. Father, we ask that you continue to strengthen him and to guide him, lead him. Yes. Father, comfort him yes. uh, at those times when he might feel down on God. Uh, lift him up, yes. oh God, yes. at those times when he uh, may want to fall back. Father, we also ask that you would bless his family. Yes. Uh, Lord, protect yes. them yes. and keep them. Provide for them, oh God, so that his heart is not heavy being overly concerned about them, but Lord, that he might put his attention on the flock that you have assigned to yes. him. Yes. Lord, again, we just thank you. And if we had a thousand tongues, we could not thank you enough. Thank you. Lord, you're just that good. Yes. Yes. And we appreciate yes. it, Lord, for thank your you. goodness, your mercy, mercy. Uh, and your grace. Yes. Lord, we glorify you. We yes. ask that in this place, Lord, that you will be glorified today. Yes. Let everything that we yes. do Lord be to thy glory.
Father, in your word, you said that whatever is bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever is loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Oh God, so we bind the spirit of fear. We bind the activities of Satan, Lord, and we loose the spirit of praise and worship yes. in this place today. Yes. Lord, we ask that you would be pleased with our worship. Yes. And your team yes. to send us forward. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Come on, let us just say amen. How many know that it reaches? Come on. How many know that it reaches? Ah, uh, it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. Y'all could just give me a little encore of that. strength, Lord, from day, oh, to day, it will never, yeah, oh, Lord, it's fine. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I was trying to pull that thing out a little bit further <laughs> because I feel the Spirit of God moving in song. Sometimes God moves in the message of our song. God moves within the message of the song on our heart. We thank God for the soul-stirred message of song we want to pause for a moment just to lift God in prayer as we come into his presence with singing. We also want to come before him with thanksgiving. Uh, God, we thank you. We thank you for this present moment. We thank you for the pleasant praisers along with the pleasant parishioners. God, we Play, pray that uh, this not be a playtime, but this be a time where the message of God is proclaimed to those who are in a dying world. God, now we pray that you smile upon your prognosticator, uh, that the word of God not be mishandled behind this sacred desk, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thine sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, let us all say together and virtually, Amen. 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 Again, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed uh, to be able uh, to experience um, the move of God in person, and we bless, we're blessed to be able to experience the move of God virtually. Uh, I am excited about those who have testimonies uh, that they have watched a worship service. They have experienced God's move in their lives through a virtual worship service, through a virtual Bible study, through a worship over the wire. I thank God that all of you have experienced God through the ministries of Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church on all of the platforms that we try uh, within our context to share. All of them may not be perfect, but we're utilizing every platform that we have to get the word of God out uh, to a world of unbelieving. In other words, brothers and sisters, we're not just staying within the walls of the church, although we love the walls of the church, and the walls of the church give us inspiration and motivation to go out into the world. 
What I want you to know is that we have been taking advantage of every platform, whether it be a Zoom call, whether it be a conference call, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, we're still and yet trying to get the word of God out to all who would be able to hear. Amen. So let's give God the praise. Come on, wherever you are. I don't know where you are. You might be at the airport with your earbud in. Look, I don't want folks to look at you crazy while you clapping your hands, but you ought to just give us a nod, uh, give us a, a, a emoji on our live. Just let us know uh, that what we are doing is supporting you in your walk with God. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, this is a season of prayer. I have been trying since I've got he gotten here to move us in a season of prayer during the Lent season. Uh, also, this is a season of sacrifice. This is a season of sacrifice. This is a season of giving up things that we like to do and praying in an effort to get God to occupy those uh, spaces in life that we give to some other things. In other words, if you like Facebook, uh, maybe you want to spend some time without doing that and allow God to come in your life. You, you may like eating cake. Perhaps this is time you want to give up eating cake. Perhaps the Lord will allow you to lose a few pounds. God is trying to come in your life and occupy a space in your life um, that would be conducive to your spiritual walk. So brothers and sisters, this is a time of prayer. This is a time of fasting. And I pray that if you are a pleasant parishioner or a partner of PG, you have been engaging us in your fasting and prayer life because God is talking to you. God is talking to you. There is something God wishes to tell you. There is something, there is a direction God wishes to point you in. There is something that God is trying to do with you, even in this time of quarantine. So we pray that brothers and sisters, uh, that you adhere or you hear what God is trying to tell the church. And understand that the church is not only the church that is within four walls, but the church is the church that goes out and spreads God's word. Brothers and sisters, if you would go with me to an old canon of the Bible, we're going to look in the old canon of the Bible. I know this is first Sunday, and I know that we are used to having the Lord's Supper uh, on this Sunday, but let's look at the old canon of the Bible because I believe that this old canon of the Bible is sharing something fresh and new for us. Second Chronicles, the 16th chapter the 7th through the 10th verses. We'll be reading four verses, and I sure do miss, and I'm so glad that I have some of the appraising uh, parishioners in the house today. I just miss how we stand for the word of God. Uh, if you're at home, uh, I would love for you to stand. If you don't have any health condition, your knees ain't uh, messed up, your hip ain't messed up, if you can stand, I would love for you to stand. Amen. Amen. Second Chronicles is not Corinthians. That's over in the New Testament. That is Chronicles, the 16th chapter, 7 through the 10th verses. We'll read four verses. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Yours may read a bit different from mine. But this is what God's word has for us to hear. It says, at that time, Hanani, the seer, came to King Asa and told him, because you have put your trust in the king of Aram, instead of the Lord, your God, you missed your chance to destroy the army of the king of Aram. Don't you remember what happened to the Cushites or the Ethiopians, the Libyans and their vast army with all of their chariots and charioteers? At that time, you relied on the Lord and he handed them over to you. The eyes of the Lord searched the whole earth in order to strengthen those 
whose hearts are fully committed to God. And I want you to know something, brothers and sisters, God's eyes are searching the entire earth to see who is still committed to God. What he says is, what Hananiah says uh, to Asa, what a fool you have been from now on you will be at war. Asa became so angry with the truth that, with the realness that Hananiah shared uh, for saying that he threw him into prison, put him in stocks, and at that time also uh, Asa began to oppress some of his people. Brothers and sisters, we want to just stop at that snippet of scripture but what I urge you to do in the privacy of your own prayer ground, as we are yet and still we're at the halfway mark of uh, the, um, the Lent season, we are at the halfway mark of fasting and prayer, uh, you ought to take time to read uh, 2 Chronicles 14th chapter, 2 Chronicles the 15th chapter, and also Second Chronicles, the 16th chapter, and this will make more sense to you. So brothers and sisters, with the time that we have together, I want to share with you during this time of praying, during this time of fasting, during this time of fasting and prayer, I want to suggest this to you. This is something that we understand uh, as we understand what prayer does. I want to use this as a text, uh, a subject, what happens when you stop praying? What happens when you stop praying? So I know I, I, I want to urge the ple pleasant parishioners and the partners of PG, don't ever stop praying because God is telling you something. God is leading you somewhere. God is doing a miraculous work in your life, but you can only understand what God is doing by and through prayer. So I want you to know, don't ever stop praying. But there are some things that can happen to us as we get to a place where we feel like we're so self-sufficient that we stop praying that we stop praying. Dr. Kerwin B. Lee says that outside of the word of God, the most powerful weapon in a Christian's arsenal is that of uh, the weapon of prayer. One of the major tricks of Satan is to do all within his power and all in what he can do to prevent the children of God from praying. For prayer is the power of the parishioner. Prayer is the power of the believer. Prayer does some things in our lives it changes us and it changes things. Prayer is a powerful weapon and if prayer ceases, brothers and sisters, one of the things that we must understand is that power is unavailable. When prayer stops, power stops. When prayer ceases, Power is unavailable. But when a believer is consistent in prayer, when a believer is consistent in seeking God's face in meditation, when a believer is consistent and uh, in prayer, we are successful in our walk with God. My brothers and sisters, prayer and meditation establishes us in God's good production. Prayer lodges us in God's protection. Prayer plants us in God's provision. I, I want to rewind just a minute just for those of you who 
perhaps didn't hear what I shared, but I want you to understand that prayer does some things for a believer. Uh, prayer, brothers and sisters, it establishes us for good production. Brothers and sisters, it lodges us in God's protection and it plants us in God's provision. As a matter of fact, brothers and sisters, Psalms 1 confirms this by recommending that if you meditate day and night, you will be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bring forth good fruit in its season. In other words, the believer's leaf will not wither, and whatsoever the believer does shall prosper. In other words, a praying person is a blessed person. When the psalmist said, blessed is the man or the woman, you see, that is God's provision. When he wrote, his or her leaf shall not wither, we see God's protection. And when they sang, whatsoever he or she doeth shall prosper, that is giving good production. And if we pay attention to today's sermonic text in light of the reign of King Asa, the Bible shares with us that Asa was a picture of a praying person. Brothers and sisters, if you read from 14 to 16, even though he messes up in 16, we see that Asa is a picture of a praying person. And I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, although you are a picture of a praying person, that does not mean you will not fall sometimes. That does not mean that you will meet up with situations that will set you back. That does not mean that you will be perfect in all your ways. But what it means is, is that you're perfect in the eyesight of God. You're perfect in your pursuit of God. Brother, and sisters, all of us ought to get to a place and a point where we seek God in prayer, we pursue God in meditation, and we trust God in provision. I'm about to get out of here, but brothers and sisters, understand that we are more successful in our life's walk when we pray. God blesses us when we pray. If you don't believe me, let's just look at a few texts. Psalm 37 and 23 says, the steps of a good man or a woman, they are ordered by the Lord and he or she delights. In other words, delights mean in that text, prays and meditates and seeks God. Brothers and sisters, the steps of a good man or a woman is, is uh, appointed by God, but it's pointed by God only when we seek God in prayer and meditation. The professor in Proverbs 16 and 7 says, when a man's or a woman's ways please the Lord, he or she makes even this particular pericope. So let's get back down to the text. I look at Asa. God allowed him to, to defeat his enemy on the battlefield. God restored and rebuilt 
uh, rebuild the walls in the city where uh, Asa was the king. God allowed him to lead the nation of Judah to two reforms as he removed the altars of traditional or in the text foreign gods and commanded the people to return to the Lord. God honored his efforts by giving the nation of Judah 10 years of peace that was unheard of at the time. The Lord God honored his efforts by giving the nation of Judah fortified cities. God gave him victory over the Cushites and the Ethiopians. In chapter 15, the message from the prophet Isaiah uh, motivated him to gather all of the people together to reaffirm their covenant with God and renewed and restored the altar to the Lord. In other words, brothers and sisters, because Asa hung so close with God, God blessed him. And brothers and sisters, what I'm sharing with you today, if you hang close with God, God will also bless you. God will also order your path. God will also make things happen in your life that would not been able to have happened at any other point. Brothers and sisters, I just want to pause parenthetically to remind us this day that brothers and sisters any and every accomplishment that has ever been achieved in our lives is because of the graciousness and the goodness of God. I, I wish I just had somebody who understood how good God has been. In other words, everything that you have went through in your life, everything that you have gained in your life, every uh, achievement accomplishment it is it been because of God's goodness and because it was because of God's grace every degree it was because God allowed you to get it every promotion it was because God allowed you to get it every accolade it was because God allowed you to achieve it every clean bill of health it was because God was keeping you when you can keep yourself everything that God has done for you every provision every protection it was because God has done it for you and one more thing I want to share with you what Evelyn said. Everything that happened to me that was good, it was because, because God, because God, because God did it. Only God, brothers and sisters, can turn our mess into success. Only God can turn our bloopers and blunders into blessings. Only God can take our mediocrity and make it mighty. Only God can take the messed up stuff in our lives and help us soar over it. Brothers and sisters, one of the things we've got to notice, it is because God caused us to be successful, is that where we are in our lives right now. I want to shout, but I'll do a disservice to this text if I just keep on lifting up my voice. So I want to look back at the text. Let's give the text just a few moments, brothers and sisters, and I promise I'll get out of here. But somewhere during the tenure of Asa's life, and I want to remind us, brothers and sisters, we never want to get to a place and a tenure in our lives that we're doing okay, everything is well, we've made it in life, and then we get to a juncture where we feel like we don't need the Lord anymore. Do I have any witnesses here or virtually? Brothers and sisters, we never want to get to a place where things are going well. There are no storms. The sun is shining. We got a little money in our pocket. We got a pretty girl on our side. We never want to get to the place where we feel like, brothers and sisters, we don't need the Lord. This is what happened to old Asa. Asa felt like things were going well. 
brothers and sisters, and this tenure, uh, in his tenure uh, and his reign, something drastic happened to Asa. King Asa, in all of his success, in all of his glory, in all of his royal prosperity, somehow arrived at a dangerous juncture in his life one in which he believed that he no longer needed to consult with God. King Asa made a drastic mistake and stopped praying. I, I want to pause parenthetically and ask those who are in virtual land, how many of us, just because we have been disconnected with the building of the church, have become disconnected with the body of Christ. How many of us have stopped praying because we have not been in the presence of the church? I want you to reflect on that, brothers and sisters, because when you stop praying, there are things that are bound to happen. King Asa made a drastic mistake because he stopped praying. What a terrible commentary of a man in which God had been so good to. The truth be told, brothers and sisters, many of us ourselves are at a similar juncture in our lives, but I share this with you. It is not intentional, but when God has been so good to us, when we find ourselves at a place where God has blessed us, Brothers and sisters, we become complacent. It's not because we won't, uh, or it is not because, uh, brothers and sisters, we intentionally turn from God, but sometimes life becomes so good that we forget about God. But what I want you to understand that in your life, God must be a priority for the believer. Every day you get up, you ought to start your day reading the Word of God. Every day you get up, you ought to start your day by praying because God has offered provision. God has offered protection. God has offered providence in your life. Every day you get up, You ought to start your day with consulting with God. We take a look at the text, and I'm just about done, y'all. We take a look at the text. Let's look at the timeline. Chapter 14 describes Asa's dependence on God. Chapter 15 inscribes his decisions influenced by God. Chapter 16 circumscribes Asa's denial of God. Let me, let me rewind and say that again. Brothers and sisters, chapter 14 describes his dependence on God. Chapter 15 inscribes his decisions influenced by God, but chapter 16 circumscribes Asa's denial of God. Chapter 14, brothers and sisters, he trusts in God. Chapter 15, he triumphs because of God, but chapter 16, he trades on God. Chapter 14, he leads or leans on God. Chapter 15, he's led by God, but in chapter 16, he leaves God. Somebody reflect on your own life. In chapter 14, he prays unto God. Chapter 15, he's promoted by God, but chapter 16, he parts from God. What the text is suggesting here is that many of us get a good start on our short sojourn with the Savior, but we don't finish the course. My point here is not to shout you, but my point here brothers and sisters, is to challenge your thinking. Don't start out with God in a robust way and end up where 
God is wondering where you are. There are a lot of people who get excited about Christ. They say, hey, I'm going to come to uh, Bible study. I'm going to give. I'm going to do all of these things. They start out with a great way, but they end up not being pleasing to God. Brothers and sisters, God is calling us to start out strong, but God is also calling us to finish well. So as we look at this miscarriage of Asa's faith, we discover three valuable lessons. And I'll emphasize upon each of these and I'll let you go. The first thing we discover in the text is that when you stop praying, and this is a season, Lent season, this is encouraging the believer to pray and fast. One of the things that I see in the text, when we stop praying, we start making foolish decisions. When we stop praying, <laughs> we start <laughs> making fool. Do y'all see the correlation? When you stop praying, you start being a fool. <laughs> when you stop praying, you start making bad decisions. Somebody saying, well, Reverend Letcher, I don't see that in the text. I'm glad you brought me back to it. To lead to doing things foolishly. Verse 9, the text, Hananiah, the preacher, he rebukes King Asa by saying, you have done foolishly. You have done fool." He tells a mighty man, and sometimes we've got to get to the point and place in our Christian walk where we speak truth to power. He was a powerful man, but the preacher said, hey, look, you, 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 you acting like a fool. Verses 7 and 8, the text suggests that Asa made foolish decisions. And I share this with you. He did three things. First of all, he turns from God. Number two, he bribes King Ben-Hadab for protection. And number three, he takes from the temple, God's house, in order to pay the bribe. Instead of continuing to trust God, he decides to rely on his own devices. Instead of trusting God, he decides to rely on King Aram for protection. My brothers and sisters, what Asa didn't realize is that no matter how much security that he had, no matter how much surveillance that you have, brothers and sisters, you still need the Savior. After all, brothers and sisters, security and surveillance cannot keep you from having a stroke. What I'm saying is, you, you need the protection of God. After all you have done, you still need the protection of God. Brothers and sisters, he didn't recognize uh, that all after all of the henchmen that he had hired that could not prevent heartache and pain. No matter how many guards and goons he got, it could not guarantee him a good night's rest. One of the things I want to share with you, brothers and sisters, no matter the biggest shotgun and all of the safeguards that you employ, it cannot shield you from the snares of Satan. But one old hymn says this, Our God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, our eternal home, 
Beneath the shadow of thy throne, thy saints have dwelt secure, sufficient, and in thy arm alone, and our defense is sure. Brothers and sisters, one of the things that I want to share with you is that if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to enlighten us, we are doomed to human ignorance. We want the Lord to enlighten us because when the Lord enlightens us, we can walk without ever feeling like we're going to trip up. We can walk freely. We can be assured of the steps that we take before us because the scripture says this. It says that, uh, uh, that your word is a light along my path and a lamp unto my feet. Hananiah makes an ac accusation because he recognized after all God had done for King Asa after all of the battles that the Lord had brought him through, the victories that he had won, it was because of his reliance on God. Asa now decides to rely on a bounty hunter, partnership with Aram uh, for protection, and he abandons his trust in an almighty God. My brothers and sisters, when you are cut off from the omnipotent, your reasoning becomes impotent. In other words, what I'm saying is, is that when, when you don't pray, you don't have wisdom. When you don't consult with God, we get to a place where we're dumbfounded. So brothers and sisters, when we don't pray, we make foolish decisions. Next piece is, brothers and sisters, sometimes we as human beings, sometimes we can act in emotionally uh, incompetent ways. What he did was he acted or reacted vengefully toward the man of God. Look at... Uh, as we look at the text, uh, brothers and sisters, one of the things that I want you to understand is that when we are not connected to God through prayer, we can react to other people, our brothers and sisters, revengefully. In other words, we'll react to our brothers and sisters in spiritually and emotionally immature ways. We'll go around talking about, oh, he ain't speak to me today. Well, we're we going to keep pushing. It can lead to you doing things revengefully. Let's look at the text. Brothers and sisters, and I just want to say this. Nowadays, we live in a world where uh, we live in council culture, and some people need to be counseled, but some people don't. I don't, I'm not the guru of who needs to be counseled and who does not. But we live, uh, with that being said, in a sin-saturated society where people penalize the prophet because of the principles of his preaching. Some, in other words, what I'm saying is, brothers and sisters, what the text is saying is that Asa got mad with the seer threw him in prison for what he was preaching. The biblical text uses the word seer. In the original Hebrew language, the word was roah. Seer means prophet. The prophet proclaimed the message given to him as the seer who beheld God's vision. Thus a prophet was a spokesperson of God. He was not saying what was in his head or on his heart, but he was speaking what God was telling him to say. The seer was the mouth by which God speaks to people. 
Therefore, what the prophet says is not of man, but it is of God. The prophet was the preacher. Paul says, and I believe that uh, 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 Brother Fowler shared with us earlier today in Romans 10, how shall they hear without a preacher and how shall they preach except they be sent? Then he goes on, Paul shares, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. As we dissect this text, we discover that as king Asa became disconnected from prayer and communion with God. And when we become disconnected with prayer and communion with God, no matter what our status is, no matter what uh, uh, position we play uh, in the ministry of the church, when we become disconnected from prayer and communion with God, we become pestered by the preacher. My brothers and sisters, when we are not connected through communication with Christ, it is easy to become agitated and aggravated by the truth. It's interesting how everyone considers honesty to be a virtue, but no one wants to hear the truth. We, wanna, we want everyone to be truthful, but when we tell one the truth, we don't want to hear it. Paul already warned us about this because he told Timothy this. For there'll be a time that will come. They won't endure sound doctrine. But they'll leap unto or heap unto lust. And they shall heap unto themselves teachers that will have itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth. And they shall be turned unto stories and fables. Brothers and sisters, one of the things that I want to tell you Pleasant parishioners, partner, uh, partners of PG, and those who are listening virtually, the truth will set you free. <clears throat> but first, it'll piss you off. <laughs> Somebody is probably saying, you shouldn't say that from the pulpit, but I think this is helpful for you to understand that the truth is being spoken. We don't always like to hear the truth, but it'll help you in the long run. It's stuff uh, when I was younger I didn't want to hear. It upset me, but it made me better. The truth will set you free, but first, it'll make you mad. I, I guess I didn't want to say that twice. <laughs> Last thing I want to share with y'all, and I'm done. I think we've shared a good time together. This is perhaps not meant to be um, a shout sermon, but this is a sermon that uh, is meant to invoke your thinking. Brothers and sisters, also what the text suggests is that when you stop praying, it can also lead to death. Let's, let's look at it. Let's rewind. First of all, when you stop praying, <laughs> first of all, it can lead to doing things foolishly. Right? It, if you stop praying, you can become a fool. You can do things foolishly, and when you do things foolishly, I can reflect on my own life there's some foolish things in the world that I've done, and if I continued to go down that path, path, it would have led to death. Next piece is 
if we stop praying, it can lead us to doing things revengefully. In other words, brothers and sisters, we have a very immature perspective of life. If we don't consult with God, it will cause us to have a very immature, narrow perspective of life. And the last thing I share with you, if you stop praying, it can lead to death. Look at the text, and I'm done. Text says in verse 12, in the 39th year of his reign, King Asa became sick. Yet even in his disease, even in his sickness, he did not seek the Lord. All I'm saying here is that when we become disconnected from the life source, things in your life, brothers and sisters, uh, can get to a place and a point where it can cause death. I want to say this, the Lord could have saved Asa, but because his heart was hardened, he didn't call out to the Lord. And I don't ever want us as believers to get to a place where we're so hard-hearted that we don't call out to God. We don't ever want to get to a place where we know we're wrong and we don't want to reach out to God. Brothers and sisters, one thing I share with you is that God can restore, God can reconcile, and God can resurrect. He's done that all throughout the Bible. God restored health through Jesus Christ. God reconciled relationships. And God also resurrected those who were dead and things that were dead. And I want you to understand this, that if you continue to trust in God, he can resurrect dead situations. Your relationships can be dead. God can resurrect them. There's someone who's struggling with a business who think that your business partnership is dead. God can restore it if you continue to trust him. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. God is able to restore dead situations. And I just wish that we would just even call upon the witnesses of the Bible. Listen to Lazarus. Lazarus was dead. He was even past rigor mortis. His body was decaying. But the Lord was able to say, Lazarus, 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 get up and come forth. Whatever you're facing that is dead, God is able to call it back into living and life. The door of the church is open. There's someone here or well, there's someone who is listening, is hearing a call from God. There is someone who knows that there, ex there is something more than what they are experiencing. There is someone who knows that God is calling you to a life of holiness and righteousness there's someone who knows that God is wanting to give you provision and protection. The time is now. The time is now. The door is open.
the door is open. Somebody say it near the cross. door is open. Why don't you think about your place in eternity? Short soul shall find Amen. Wherever you are, let's just give God praise through hand claps. Lift your hands. Amen. 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 I long for the day uh, for when we as a body of Christ can be back in God's house, in the tabernacle, in the temple, in the church. I long for that day. But until then, we're doing our best to share with you God's word through all of the mediums and through all of the platforms that God has shared with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that we want to share with you. Yes, it is the first Sunday. It is the first Sunday. We want you to always understand that uh, God is calling us to remember his blood uh, and his suffering and his sacrifice. Uh, brothers and sisters, understand that and understand that what God is doing, uh, it, it is real. God is doing it, what God is doing, it is real. We're not going to be doing it, uh, uh, actually engaging in the ritual of Lord's Supper today, but we want you to remember that it is first Sunday and usually that's what we do in the Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, next piece we want to look at, brothers and sisters, we thank God for all of our guests. If you are a guest online, we thank you for logging on. There are so many opportunities for worship. You could have logged in in so many other places, but thank you for looking at us and praying for us and engaging with us. We thank you. We're a church who we're, try we're striving to be pleasantly purposeful for all people. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and if you want to become a pleasant parishioner, there are a couple of ways you can do it. Um, you can call in to the office. Uh, the number is 314 314-535-7548. 314-535-7548. You can leave a, um, a message uh, on our um, uh, voicemail and we will respond to you within 48 hours. Or brothers and sisters, that you can send an email to ghpruitt at gmail.com. You can tell us that you wanna be a part of the body of Christ through the ministry of Pleasant Green and we will respond to you within 48 hours. We will respond to you within 48 hours. We thank you for considering us. Also, brothers and sisters, those who are pleasant parishioners, partners of PG and friends, givers, we thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your continued generosity. Thank you for your continued generosity. 
Uh, I also want to share with you some modes of giving. I want to share with you the modes of giving. You can share and give to our fiscal plant. Uh, in other words, our physical uh, plant that is at 1220. 1220 R.E.V. G.H. Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. You can give to the church by sending a check or a money order at uh, 1220 REV GH Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Or if you are technologically savvy, you can uh, log on to our website that is at www.pgmbcstl.org. I want to say that again, www.pgmbcstl.org, and you can give online. You can, once you log on, you can tap on giving, and you can give to us uh, or the church electronically. We thank you for that. We thank you for that. We thank you for that. Brothers and sisters, please continue to take advantage of all Christian education opportunities. We have our Christian education opportunities uh, on uh, Saturdays. Um, uh, you can be looking out for an email on that. We have a Saturday uh, a Christian education opportunity. We have Sunday Christian education opportunities. Uh, we also have Wednesday night Christian education opportunities and also Thursday night Christian education opportunities. You can log on to our website. They will be posted very soon. Uh, ways that you can take advantage of our Christian education opportunities. We thank God for you and God bless you uh, for tuning in. With that being said, again, we are a church who is striving to become pleasantly purposeful for all people. So let us go before the Lord in benedictory prayer. We thank you. We thank you. Let the church Let the church say God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Let the church say Let the church God has spoken Let the church say Amen Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God even our Father which has loved us has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus through all ages and the world without end. Finally, brothers and sisters, ple pleasant parishioners and partners of PG, farewell. Do a good work outside of these walls. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace be with you all until we meet again. Let us all say, Amen.
Bereich.